Welcome to UCLA Next. In today's show, we're going to introduce you to some very cool and way beyond cool Southern Californians. We're going to show you highlights of Southern California's diverse business, political, and artistic spectrum. So, for the next 30 minutes, our UCLA Next correspondent, Brian Rose, will show you the kind of people that make our Golden State shine even brighter. When we think of Southern California culture, well, there's cool, and then there's beyond cool. And the person you're about to meet is definitely in the category of beyond cool. She's a woman who made her mark in the film industry by involving herself in seminal films that help push the outer edges of three separate genres. Now, if that were all there were to the super producer, that'd be enough. But for Katie Haber, it was just the beginning. For Katie, there's definitely more story to write. I started working for a producer um, as his assistant and I did um, three movies with him and two theater productions and then he went back to the States and you know we bade our fond farewells and someone rang me up one day and said do you know who Sam Peckinpah is? I said no. He said well he's here making a movie called Straw Dogs would you be interested in working with him? I started working for him in 1971 and I worked with him for eight years. As soon as we left we did Straw Dogs in England he left to come here to make a movie called Junior Bonner with Ju Steve McQueen and I got a phone call from him saying, you know, would, would you come over and do that? And I've been in LA ever since. After Junior Bonner, we did The Getaway and then from The Getaway we did uh, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid and Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia and then, then we went to Europe to do Cross of Iron. Um, we were in Germany and Yugoslavia for months and months and months and then we did Convoy and then during Convoy, I, I, I realized that I had, in order to keep my sanity, it was time to go. Sam Peckinpah is no one you'll ever meet again in your life. He was a genius. He was a madman. He was an alcoholic. Um, he was everything that you wouldn't want to be around and yet had to be around because of his genius. And I lasted eight years and then at the end of it, I said, that's it. Either he goes or I go and, you know, it's... And it was a shame because it was, a, it was an amazing work, working relationship. I'm fortunate enough to, to have had a career that, that involved me with people that I deeply respect. Today, Katie continues to remain involved in the film industry as Managing Director of the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, Los Angeles. I was one of the original hundred that, fo that started BAFTA. There were a hundred people who were the first members. I mean, I didn't really... I wasn't really at the dinner where two people sat down and said, let's do it, but I was one of the original people that, that joined. And I've been a member of BAFTA for, you know, since, it, since its inception, which is about 15 years. What I like about BAFTA is we're becoming more and more significant in the industry, and it's nice to, to be part of something that has grown that significant. I mean, for instance, all the studios want us to view their films because our members vote for the BAFTA Awards, which are now ahead of the Academy Awards, so whatever happens at the BAFTA Awards plays a significant role in the Academy and who votes for what. Katie spent years as a Hollywood power player until 1996 when Katie met Ted Hayes, a homeless activist. After hearing Ted's vision for a new kind of homeless shelter, Katie and Ted established Dome Village, an innovative homeless shelter program in Los Angeles, novel both in design and concept. There were two, um, there still are, two sort of entertainment industry, um, socially conscious groups in Los Angeles and in New York. And the Creative Coalition had a homeless workshop where they invited various people involved in homelessness. The Reardon was invited, all sorts of different. Reardon was just running for mayor at the time, and they had people from outside uh, other cities who were doing homeless issues and food drives, and they had um, documentarians who did movies about homelessness. There was one lady there who did a movie about Be Beverly Hills Bag Ladies, and various people, and they came and sat down, and we had a, a panel discussion. And Ted Hayes showed up. I had a little model of the Dome Village. It was not yet in existence. But this is what I was using to promote the idea. And so I was asked to speak for five minutes. And I got up and spoke for five minutes. And at the end of five minutes, Katie approached me. I said, that's the most fascinating idea 
I ever heard about homelessness. And then she said that, you know, she can do things to help out. She's a volunteer. She has connections. She works for various organizations in Hollywood. She used to be, you know, a film producer, et cetera, et cetera. I said, cool. So I said, I would really love to help volunteer and help you get it set up. Well, that was 10 years ago. I d it just evolved into, you know, I didn't, I didn't go, oh, I have to dedicate my life to something more significant. I have to give up the trivia, the trivia and the trappings of, of entertainment industry and go dedicate my life and get down in the dirt. I thought it would be something that I would just, you know, do on the side. It got to the point to where she was around so much, we decided to bring her on as, as an employee of the organization. And ever since that time, that's what she has done. Um, I would have to say that, that she has made a difference in the village in her ability to produce. It wasn't because I wanted to be a pioneer in everything, it just, that's just the nature of the beast, I suppose. But Katie, being oh so British, found one more unexpected arena to open to the residents of the L.A. Dome Village. She also started a cricket team. The captain of the Beverly Hills cricket team rang me up and said, we're very short of players this weekend. Is there anybody on the BAFTA team that can play for, for Beverly Hills? So I said, I'm sure I could find someone. So I rang everybody up and everybody was too busy or too short notice or they had to go shopping with their wives or something. I couldn't find anybody. So Ted, who's my partner, well, he's my partner here. Anyway, I said to him, would you like to play cricket this weekend? And he said, what's cricket? I said, well, it's like baseball, but, you know, there's some slight sort of al al alternatives to, to, to the way it's played. So he played, and he absolutely loved it. And he said, you know what? We should start a cricket team here at Dome Village because the ethics and the principles of cricket um, are you, as, it's stuff that you can use in life to improve your life. So to cut a very long story short, we started teaching the homeless guys here how to play cricket. Within three months, we'd raised the money, we'd trained the team, we got some ringers to go with us, and we took them on tour of England. When we got back, we realized that homelessness and team are not synonymous. And we decided we could never keep this, keep this team together because homelessness in, in its very essence is transitory and you can't say you can't move on to better things because you've got to play cricket <laughs> you know it's sort of almost forcing people to remain homeless you know <laughs> so we decided to find um, another reason to influence people to play cricket and we decided to go to Compton we um, went around all the schools and spoke to the, the, the coaches there the, the sports coaches and on June 1st, 1996, we had this huge workshop at Compton High School. Oh, there was at least 100 kids there, more, more than 100 kids. And, you know, we, talk, we chatted, and, and, and those that wanted to continue, we got, took their names and addresses and da, da, da. And that's how we created our team. People say, why cricket? You know, it's the principle of the sport. You applaud the other team. You don't call them the enemy. They, they are you know, an opposing side who gain your respect. So this whole gang thing, you know, you lose the, you know, the, the disrespect for, for, for an opposition. The homies and pops have garnered worldwide interest and are the potential subjects of a new feature film project, with Katie attached to produce, of course. We've just signed the production deal. Yeah. Uh, we just signed the rights deal. Right. Um, and now it's, you know, the producers keep coming down to games and talking to the guys, and so it's, it's really in development stages now. Every time I go d drive around downtown and I see a film crew setting up, I get jealous, you know. Um, I love the whole... The whole, the whole concept of filmmaking. Um, it's something I miss terribly. And I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's something I will give up. I, I've never been able to do anything that I'm not passionate about. I don't think it's worth getting up in the morning if you don't care about what you're doing. Man, Katie Haber makes us want to work harder in our own communities. She defines what's best about California and the people who live, work, and play here. And she also reminds us that we're at our coolest when we're willing to help and share with others. If you're rich, 
successful and on the go, it isn't enough to just arrive. You gotta arrive in style. And to prove that point, we found two Southern California businessmen who cashed in on the private air charter business. Now they created the business to first serve their own needs, tastes, and demands, and then they opened the doors to other top of the pyramid business executives. And they soon found themselves running the definitive, cool Southern California Corporation. How'd all this happen? Well, find out from Michael Napoliello and Jason Moskowitz, two business partners who are flying high with their California dream. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. We're going on a very cool ride. That's right. We're going up, up, and away. Southern California seems to be the place where a certain kind of business can thrive. Maybe it's because we're the kind of population and culture that thinks beyond the boundaries of the box. That certainly defines co-founders of Skybridge, Michael Napoliello and Jason Moskowitz. They found a way to expand the air charter business. When we came across the idea for Skybridge, it was a combination of, of our you know, interest in the industry, our frustration with our experiences, and at our point in our career, we had to do more. Like many uh, people, I've had uh, trips I had to take that really couldn't be accommodated by commercial flights. I remember one meeting that I had where I had to be in Cincinnati and in Purchase, New York, all on the same day. And there just wasn't a commercial schedule there. And I realized there really wasn't a uh, professional, high quality, national service set up uh, to enable people to take uh, on-demand charter. Basically, private jets where and when they want to go and pay as they go with no commitments. With Skybridge, you don't have any fractional memberships. You don't have any club memberships. You don't have any prepayment program. You're not locked into any long-term relationship other than the effort that we make to keep your business. It's really like an airline based on private jets. The, the difference between charter and commercial airlines is as a, as a charter you have the freedom to go anywhere, anytime, uh, to any destination. Uh, whereas the airlines are restricted to about 100 airports, five or six major airlines, and you have to go on their time schedule. So it's really all about saving time and being able to fly directly to where you want to go. You don't have to wait in line for your baggage. You don't have to wait in line for your ticket. Uh, anything like that. It's, it's direct, it's quick, it gets you there, it gets you home. Skybridge found that its customer prefers a plane that is comfortable, even luxurious. The client also benefits from a concierge service that handles reservations for theater, sporting events, and hotel accommodations. Deluxe catering and custom gourmet meal preparation are part of any flight, and there are amenity packages that are created for the discerning customer. Customers can expect many wonderful things. One of the things um, that I think they're surprised about is that even though with the Skybridge, they're not forced into or shackled by a fractional or membership, they can still make trip plans literally a couple hours before they go. We are truly on demand. Uh, another thing they can expect uh, is the finest in safety, uh, which I think you would expect from any airline, commercial or any other kind, but also the finest in security. The security is personalized to your needs. It's really, uh, you know, the utmost uh, in fine amenities, uh, you know, leather uh, seats, quiet planes, great leg room, wonderful food. Our, our customers expect to be pampered when they get on the plane, and it's, it's uh, first class seating, and, and uh, you know, it's a comfortable way to travel. On charter planes, the typical customer can really be about anyone. We've had uh, people with money, uh, entertainment, individuals, celebrities, uh, uh, rock stars, ath uh, athletes. Um, it, it could be just a variety of people. A new breed of traveler is the family, a uh, large family or a family uh, that has an itinerary that uh, might actually be more cost effective on a private jet. Now for one person, obviously it would be more economical to fly commercially, but what if you wanted to bring six people or eight people in your family with you? For that kind of price, you can charter a jet. Special occasions, like a wedding. Wouldn't it be great to take the wedding party from LA to San Francisco uh, on board a wonderful private jet?
but like all Californians who have a multifaceted approach to life and business, these two partners decided to take their profit margin and contribute to the culture of art and philanthropy. They made their next venture the endowment and refurbishment of an historic 1923 Bijou Theater in Hermosa Beach. This venue has become a world-class art gallery. Gallery C uh, stands for a couple things, uh, beside uh, play on words for come and see it, uh, is a California contemporary. So all of our artists are uh, California natives, practicing California, and are contemporary artists. You know, we wanted to do a commercial business that brought a little fun and culture uh, to the region, and uh, that combined with our love of art. Well, we formed a nonprofit here at the gallery called California Museum of Monumental Art, and the genesis of the idea behind that was just using the, uh, the space here, which has very high ceilings, three or four stories tall high ceilings, and making it a home for uh, some art that normally wouldn't be able to be seen in the public, you know, monumental art, large art. Uh, that idea is in place, but where I wanted to take that idea is a little further and to combine it with my love of children, and I have two beautiful children, and uh, we formed an organization called Kama Kids. And what Kama Kids is, is an organization that teaches philanthropy to the children of high net worth people. Philanthropy does come back and, and, uh, and serve you well. So we said, why don't we take it to the next level? We do want to teach our children philanthropy and social responsibility. Why don't we create a program that, that, that actually strives to teach that to people who, who might want their children to have that experience in time. So what we did is we combined that idea with Kama Kids and said, hey, let's put the kids on the board of Kama and this will be their workshop and they'll have that ability to uh, uh, not just talk about philanthropy but actually have some hands-on experience at a young age. These two men, Michael Napoliello and Jason Moskowitz, friends since their high school days in New Jersey, have come a long way on their journey to business success. They define the coolest of the cool when it comes to California business. As you can see, you don't need to surf to make a splash. Up here in the sky, Michael Napoliello and Jason Moskowitz are creating plenty of waves with their innovative idea. And what keeps them on the edge, the forefront of business here in Southern California, just takes a little relaxation. Being cool in California is less about chasing trends and more about letting the trends come to you. It only took a couple of thousand years for this next trend to finally catch up with the cutting edge needs of its California customers. That's right, this is so old, it's new. Straight from the secret recipes of ancient Chinese dynasties, Tapioca Express is finding its way into SoCal culture with little magic bubbles. Southern California defines the American dream for many immigrants who find their way into the L.A. culture. Sam Chu came to the United States with an immigrant's dream, and he found his success after a decade of hard work with a little tea recipe from Asia called boba. From this little starch ball, Mr. Chu created tea, milk, and juice drinks that have become so popular and unique, they have found their niche in the trendy Southern California landscape. It started about 15 years ago in the area of Tai Chung near Tanhai University. They started by making boba smoothies and coffee. Then the store selling boba started to select products which could be... In 1998, we came to the United States, and there were around 20 shops that were selling boba beverages. We thought we could do better. We knew that boba was doing very well in Taiwan, and we believed that we could bring it here and do better than the first shops that were originally here. The company is just four years old. That's what's amazing about it. Word of mouth made this company very, very successful already. Uh, our product was very well received in our main store beginning in 1999. There were always long lines. That's when we first knew that Tapioca Express would do very well all over America. Last year, oh, they would uh, like to expand these kind of activities a bit more because at that time, uh, the network 
I think consisted about 30 stores and now we uh, in 18 months I've seen double that. We are talking about not only Southern California but Northern California, uh, New York, uh, we have a store in Colorado and Houston and now we have a store in Las Vegas and Canada. In our warehouse is, is daily activities uh, non-stop. We sell about 12,000, 13,000 cups a day in our network. Uh, My wife made a very good product. After we tested the market in the United States, we decided to come and start the business. Actually, people think, oh, this is a trendy drink, you know, it's uh, tapioca and boba and pearl tea and bubble tea and all that. Um, so it's, it's interesting and it's also exciting to see something that you grew up with and then it's in a new world. So what is this Taiwanese import, which has won over the cappuccino and chai crowd? It's a tapioca-based drink blended with milk or juice beverages. Actually, I like very much introduce to the either the younger segment or an older segment uh, the benefit of tea. So it's not only a trendy drink in my mind. It's actually uh, a drink that's good for your health. You feel good about it when you drink it in the morning, at noon, you know. Bob and Bibers are a social bunch. It's typical for college kids and high school students to take downtime while on the cell phone or text messaging. While boba has been a hot commodity in Taiwan, it was a risk to bring it to the fickle market of Southern California. But like all things cool, once it found its audience, the business grew rapidly by word of mouth. We are always looking for added benefit as well as something new and fresh and more interesting uh, for our customers. In terms of the environment, in terms of the, the look, to try to upgrade or evolve uh, the experience. So it's our challenge in our next phase to uh, make this drink their daily beverage. That would be my dream. Uh, I want to keep my family and my business growing. And I want to continue to be happy. I want to keep improving. Now that's an inspiring story with a very sweet ending. A business that caters to the taste and the lifestyle of the Southern California customer while keeping ahead of the trends, it's the very definition of California cool. Pretty tasty.